There's five core areas of uh, retention that you have to pay attention to. This is work from my wife, Amanda Hammett. Uh, she's the millennial translator. She works around the country working with companies around retention. And we've kind of merged a little of these things together because she works on how do you recruit and bring on the best talent. And the best talent are the young ones. And, and I know some of it scares the crap out of some of you. But if you avoid hiring young people, guess what? You will not have people to hire at some point in time. You either embrace it now and figure this out. There's five leverage points in there. If you mess up, you will not have a good employee experience. Hi, my name's Gene Hemet. What you just heard was a little bit of an excerpt from a speech I recently gave to multi-million dollar business owners and founders. That was really about uh, their overall business and leadership and, and really some of the, the high growth strategies that are necessary for you to grow your company. Well, I know that if you want to grow your company, you've got to grow your people. And when you invest enough to grow your people, to make a difference, to move the needle, then you want to make sure you retain that talent. And so I'm going to go through uh, some of the details that I didn't share in that speech with you today about the five leverage points to employee retention so that you can improve your retention and you can actually create a stronger bottom line. All right, so here we go. I'm going to go cut over to my laptop. All right, so this is just a quick little diagram of the five core areas for employee experience. So if you want to improve your retention rate, you've got to focus on the employee experience. So when you are actually bringing someone in, you're recruiting them. And those people have to go through a specific process. You're setting the tone immediately for what the experience will be like when you get there. So for example, if you interview someone and you never let them know that it uh, wasn't a good fit, then that's going to have a bad taste in their mouth. So I'm going to urge you to be the kind of company that communicates effectively. And even if someone's not a good fit, figure out a way to tell them it's not a good fit. Don't leave them hanging on. Now, you may say that you didn't want that person in the first place, but maybe you didn't want them for that role or you didn't want them right now. So you don't want to create any kind of damaging place inside there. And that's just one example. The whole recruitment process is a leverage point that if you get this right, everything else gets easier. It really is one of those uh, cornerstones of the employee experience. And we know that uh, one of the things we work with clients on is what questions do you ask so that you are ensured to bring on people that have similar values that you'd have, not the same thoughts and we want diversity of thought, but how do you bring them on to support the values of the culture that you're trying to intentionally shape? All right, so the second core area here is the onboarding experience. This is about the first you know, three days or the first 60 days of that whole bringing the customer on or bringing the client on or bringing the employee on, excuse me. So you want to have an onboarding process that's very intentional. Now, you may already have that, but some of the places where people get um, miss the mark here, or they just don't have the right support to set expectations for what is necessary for them. They're, the leadership is not guiding them to really support them, um, letting them figure out some things on their own. Uh, they, they go through a good job in the first day or two. I, we've all been through those kind of meetings, uh, if you've ever worked for a company. But what happens over a 60-day period really matters a lot about what the employee experience will be there. So we actually partner with Amanda on this, who is the millennial translator that I mentioned in the speech that, that you saw in the earlier. That's my wife. And she can help understand the critical points of onboarding that really will uh, make a difference in the employee experience. The third area here is lead, about leadership development, about how people want and need to be led and how not to do it. The real big thing here is a lot of people are micromanaging or controlling, and you don't think you are. Like it, It's not a black and white kind of thing. It, there's scales of, of gray, if you will, in this. And the better you are in tune with le leading people, the more likely to have a better employee experience. All right, the next area here is develop. This is about their own growth. It's about what skills are they getting? What, what kind of responsibilities are they able to take ownership of? What um, projects and, and experiences are they getting that really adds to their 
own value to the marketplace. And I know I know it's kind of scary to think about you increasing the value of someone to the marketplace, but if you don't invest in the development phase of your employees, then they will sit on your team and not be developed. They will not be at the fullest potential. So what you want to do is have a very intentional program that allows you to develop people the way that they need to be developed. And it's not necessarily the way you want them developed. It's the way they want to develop. So if you want to increase that employee experience and reduce your retention, then you want to, or increase your retention, uh, forgive me, then you want to make sure you have a development program that allows for the right leadership development. And then finally, the exit. Now you may think that, what does that have to do? That They've already left. Well, you want to make sure that they're leaving under the right pretenses and that you are aware of why they're leaving. So that will give you feedback into this, but also... There's a lot of, of employees that come back as a boomerang. They, they may leave because of this season in their life. Maybe they want to travel. Maybe they want to go back to school. Or maybe they want to go learn something else or there's some new opportunity. But there may be a reason why they want them to come back. So you want them to actually be talking great about the company and the experience that they had while you're there because that will lead to more benefit. All right, I'm going to switch back to the camera real quick. Well, hopefully you have a little bit more uh, intention to create a better employee experience, which will improve your retention. So I work with companies that are in a growth mode or they want to be in a growth mode and they want to hire the right people so that they can grow fast. And it really takes a, a really good plan through all five of these stages to, if you want to increase the employee experience to a point where it's a competitive advantage for you and your company. So if you ever have any questions about this, make sure you reach out to me. I've got a lot of resources coming. We've got some new things going on. So make sure that you're reaching out uh, and, and just engage with me. Just send me an email, gene at genehammett.com. Otherwise, uh, just uh, reach out through social media, wherever you see this information. As always, lead with courage, and we'll see you next time.